celebrating the new year coming in. Uh, we're on to a whole new year. We're on the last week of NFL Pickums, which is kind of sad. But we still have the playoffs and everything. But then, yeah, we're we're at the regular season finale, week 18, the hardest week to pick in sports. Because you have to do a lot of assuming that like teams are going to rest their starters. They're going to try to play spoiler. They're going to they're gonna go hard regardless to keep momentum forward into the playoffs. So you kind of have to take a guess based on what each team is like kind of made up of. Like You could assume the Lions are going to play hard versus the Vikings, but what are the uh, Ravens going to do against the um, Steelers? You know, Ravens have nothing to play for, and they are, you know, they might just sit this out, you know, rye risk injury. You know what I mean? There's two different philosophies where the Lions have said they're not done till the season's done, so... Uh, yeah, that's real quick before we get into the video though. Um, make sure you drop a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Leave a like, uh, you know, leave your comments down below with your picks, how you've done this season, all that fun stuff. So that way I can get back to you. Uh, comment back, and you know the likes and the subscribing just helps the video out, whatever about that. But the comments are the most important thing. I like seeing how you think. And um, if I sound weird, it's because I'm like still kind of sick and I'm still getting over it. So you know, I gotta just be good. Um, I have like RSV or whatever that virus that's going around. It sucks like a respiratory virus very tired but anyway we'll, we'll grind through this um if my picks are weird it's because i'm sick and i'm a little delirious <laughs> um let's go over our picks record though let's hop into it again make sure you leave your picks and all that down below and uh what you think of mine and all that fun stuff running out of days uh last week we did pretty good we went 12 and 4 finally a good week we broke out of our slump from 6 and 9 9 and 7 8 and 8 uh, unfortunately, we did hit 100 losses. We're at 156 and 100. Uh, good for 60.9%. So we're still over 60%. Not a bad season. Hopefully this week is good, but you never know with week 18. It's always such a, it's always such a shot in the dark. All right, two games on Saturday Night Football. 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard, we have the Pittsburgh Steelers taking on the Baltimore Ravens. What a coincidence. We just mentioned that. Uh, the Steelers are four-point favorites with an over-under of 37.5. Uh, the Steelers are coming off a big win versus the Seahawks, 30-23, to in which they were able to kind of clinch a, an above 500 season. Everything's good for them. And the Ravens <laughs> destroyed the Dolphins, 56-19, clinching the, uh, their division, clinching, I think, a number of other things, the one seed, the first round by. So they have nothing to play for here. Steelers, I think if they win, they still have a shot at playoffs. They're like, they're, they, if they can win they pretty much guarantee themselves a berth or they need a little help and they can get in so it's kind of one of them things where it's like the Steelers have a lot to play for here the Ravens literally have nothing to play for except maybe just preventing their rival from making the playoffs but is it worth the risk um but again they have that bye week so they get an extra week so do they want to have two whole weeks off get rusty um my guess is they're going to go with the they're like the halftime thing where they play their starters for the first half and then the Steelers kind of win this game when they take out their starters in the second half. Uh, that's going to be my guess for how this uh, Steelers Ravens games goes. I don't know. Again, it's it's weird because the Ravens literally have nothing to play for. I mean, they might just sit everybody. All right, 8.15 p.m. Eastern Standard. The Texans take on the Colts. Colts are one and a half point favorites with an over under of 47 and a half. Um, the Texans are coming off a 26-3 win versus the Titans with the return of Stroud. They looked really good. They looked a lot more crisp, a lot sharper, a lot more consistent. Uh, the Colts, they beat the Raiders just barely 23-20. Um, well, that was a weird game. Some, there was a controversial thing where they called Jack Jones offside, and he wasn't. So it's kind of like, should they have won? Um, but I'm going to go with the Texans. I like their defense a lot more. I like the way that they've been playing football all year compared to the Colts. The Colts play good, but it's really streaky. It'll be like one good game, one bad game, one good game, one bad game. And the record kind of indicates that's how they played. They're 9-7 and seven, um, and rather inconsistent, kind of streaky. I, I can see the Texans getting to Gardner Minshew, making him have bad games, kind of just, you know, just kind of, you know, just basically going after the offense, kind of shutting it down a little bit, and then doing enough with their offense against the meh, t Colts, D you know, it's meh, uh, you know. If, if the Colts had beaten the Raiders very aggressively, like by quite a bit and not on any kind of like weird situation with the game, um, then I probably would have gone with the Colts in this one because of experience. But again, it's two rookie head coaches. So, and I think D'Amico is a little bit better than Steichen. So, ah, uh, this, this is going to be a really good game, actually. I'm probably going to stream that game, uh, Texans and Colts. That, that sounds like a fun fucking game to watch, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, so these are my, uh, picks for Saturday. Let's go to Sunday 1 p.m. We have six games here. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers take on the Carolina Panthers. Uh, the Bucs are favored by five and a half with an over under 37 and a half. Bucs have to keep winning to win their division and they need a little bit of help so expect them to come out here like their asses are on fire after losing to the Saints 23-13. 
Panthers lost 26-0 to CJ Bethard and the Jaguars. I'm not picking them to win this game, even if they're home. Um, I don't even. Bryce Young may not play. I seen he got like murdered, uh, <laughs> and he was like really slow to get up. So I don't know what's going on with all that. I'm gonna go with the Bucks because. You know, David Tepper might. I want to see David Tepper get angry and throw a drink again. So let's go Buccaneers. All right. What do we got now? Uh, the Browns coming off a 37-20 win versus the Jets. Joe Flacco keeps on going, going, going. And the Bengals. Here's a game that is really weird. Uh, the Bengals lost the Chiefs 25-17. Bengals are four and a half point favorites with an over/under of 38.5. I don't really know why <laughs> anyone's favorite. This should just be a pick 'em game. Because it's like neither team has anything to play for. The Browns can't be any lower than the five seeds, so they're locked in. The Bengals cannot make the playoffs, and the only thing they have to do is lose so they get a better draft spot potentially. You know what I mean? So it's like, who's going to win? I think the Bengals may actively try to not win, whereas the Browns could just kind of whoops a daisy their way to a victory because, you know, 12-5 and five looks pretty good. Whereas, like, the Bengals, I mean, you can finish above 500 and ruin your draft spot, or you can go 8-9 and nine and get a slightly better pick. That's kind of how I view this. Like, the Browns have nothing. Neither team has anything to do in this game. Um, except the Bengals, by losing, they improve their, like, draft positioning. So, go with the Bengals. That's what I got. Plus, a conference loss looks good in the draft. It really moves you down spots. Similar story here for the Vikings. Like, what do they have to... They can't make the playoffs. They've got nothing. Uh, they, Detroit can't get messed with. They're the three seed pretty much locked in. Like, there is nothing here for either team to play for. <laughs> except pride and because uh, while well, the Vikings are coming off a really bad 33-10 loss to the Packers and the Cowboys or and the Lions are coming off a very interesting loss to the Cowboys let's just leave it at that 20 to 19 in which a referee <laughs> made a couple interest made an interesting call at the end of the game there I think we can all agree which was kind of dog shit <laughs> um so yeah, we we have this uh, Lions Vikings. Lions have openly stated they're not like putting the brakes on all season. They're gonna play this game like like it matters. So uh, uh, Campbell said that they're gonna rest players when the season's over. So that means they're playing against the Vikings. Vikings literally have nothing to play for here unless they just want to win and like crater their draft positioning for some reason, which they shouldn't. Uh, like for the Bengals and the Vikings, they literally have nothing to win for. <laughs> it's just like why would you guys want to win? Damn, could you imagine the Browns and the Lions both with 12 and a half or 12 wins? <laughs> Jesus, dude, we're in a different NFL. <laughs> the Patriots are 4 and 12. <laughs> you know what's funny, though? The Jets are still equally as bad as they were 10 years ago. It's really comforting, actually. It's like, wow, the Jets have been awful for my whole life. What a comforting factor. Uh, the New York Jets take on the New England Patriots. Patriots are two and a half point favorites. With I know they went to like two conference championship games. I watched both of the. Ugh. We, I guess we can count that, but other than that, it's been all bad for them. Uh, Pats are two and a half point favorites with an over under a 30 and a half. The Patriots are favored because they're at home and they have like a 16 or 15 game winning streak versus the Jets. I think it comes to an end. Number one, the offense is real bad, but it's been decent. I, I don't, I don't know. I don't want to win. That's why I'm picking the Jets. I'd rather lose this game, let that streak go away in a season where we need to get this loss. Because if we win, we can go to the fifth pick or the seventh pick. If we lose, we are sticking around the two or three pick. Do you see how that works for us? So, and plus, like, I think it may even get us over the Jets because, um, or the Commanders because the Jets would get like a, it would improve our strength of schedule. So again, for the Patriots, you want to lose this game. So do the Jets. This is going to be a must lose for each team. Um, and I think because the Jets are a worse team, the Patriots are going to lose this game better. I know that's confusing. But because the Patriots are a better ran organization than the Jets, they will probably be able to lose this game that both teams must lose, if that makes any. Like, there's no reason to win this game. <laughs> but I feel like the Jets are accidentally going to win this because they really want to end that losing streak. <laughs> All right. So give me the Jets 13-10 to in a very awful football game. Very defensively dominant, though. We'll be live for that game. We'll be watching the Jets and Patriots. <laughs> the Tankathon game. Falcons take on the Saints. This could be a division title implication game. Again, if the Falcons lose, or if the Falcons win and Tampa loses to Car uh, Carolina for some reason, I think the Falcons could steal the division at 8-9 uh, with winning over the Saints. But Falcons lost 37-17 to, to, to the Browns. Oh, wait, no, they didn't play the Browns. The Bears, sorry. The Falcons lost 37-17 to the Bears. And the New Orleans Saints lost... Or won 23-13 versus the Bucks. They're, they're like their magic over Tampa Bay continues. Um, I don't know. I got the Saints winning. They're home. I think their defense will shut down the Falcons' mediocre, very inconsistent, streaky offense. Um, I don't know if their defense is gonna. I mean, their defense will probably shut down a Saints offense, but 
I, I kind of just like the Saints a bit more. I think they've shown over the year they're a slightly better team than the Falcons, especially at home. Uh, New Orleans is a tough place to play. All right, last 1 p.m. game. We got the Jaguars taking on the Titans. Jags are five and a half point favorites with an over under of 40 and a half. I'm guessing Trevor Lawrence will play. I don't know. We can revisit this game on uh, Saturday or th Friday um, when we know more. Jaguars beat the Panthers 26 0. Kind of talked about that. Titans lost 26 uh, 3 to the Texans. I like the Jaguars to win. Um, Titans don't really seem to be putting up a fight in these last couple games to play spoiler. So I'm going to go with the Jaguars. They should be able to completely shut down the Titans' offense and they should be able to do just enough on offense against the meh Titans' defense to win the game. I'm going through these quick, but it's also because I'm a little bit sick and I don't really want to spend a lot of time talking tonight. I'm sorry. Plus, like, these games are so hard to predict. I'm going to be honest with you. It's like, <laughs> I think this is how this is going to go. Like, this game, I have a crazy upset. I don't even know why I'm doing this. Uh, the Seattle Seahawks take on the Arizona Cardinals. Seahawks are three-point favorites with an over-under of 47.5. I just feel like this is a weird game that Arizona is going to steal from somebody. Um, Arizona seems to be destined to play spoiler and win these games. It seems like they want to win. It seems like they're not losing on purpose. So expect Arizona to come out here and potentially try to end Seattle's season by beating them and just making whatever happens with the Packers and the Bears relevant. Um, potentially, you know what I mean? Like, just make it more complicated, more scary. Just pretty much put a big monkey wrench, take away their own control. I really like the Cardinals to play upset here. I like the way that they played the Eagles. I didn't really like the way that Seattle played the Steelers. Um, I think Arizona has this weird surprise factor to him now that Kyler's back and it's like well, what the fuck are they going to do and you, you know you might get caught flat footed um, the Eagles did I wonder if Seattle does too much worse defense uh, uh, Seattle and Eagles kind of have a similar defense actually especially now uh, alright <laughs> let's go on to the next game uh, Chicago Bears take on the Green Bay Packers Packers are 3 point favorites with an over under of 44 It's re uh, the Bears beat the Pal uh, uh, Falcons 37-17 Fal uh, the Packers beat the Vikings as we already discussed 33-10 so um yeah as good as the Bears have been playing and they've been playing very good the last half of the season like they look really good they could be a good team next year um there is one fatal flaw for them it's just like they can't beat fucking Green Bay it, they can't win in Green I don't if this maybe was in Chicago I maybe take the Bears but man <laughs> I do hope the Bears kind of win this game just because of the poeticness of first it was the Lions that ended their season. Now it's the Bears um, teams getting their revenge for years past of all the bullying and all the stuff of Rodgers and blah, blah, blah. Um, but ultimately, I do think that it's really hard, especially since Jordan Love balled the fuck out against the Bears earlier this year. He's only gotten better. Um, the Bears defense has gotten tremendously better, but I think the Packers have figured out kind of who they are, at least on offense for the most part. I don't know. Uh, Packers kind of own the Bears, and it's really hard to pick against them. It's like if my team wasn't tanking, I would have picked them against the Jets without question. Uh, the Chiefs take on the Chargers. For some reason, the Chargers are two and a half point favorites with an over under a 35 and a half. I don't. I think it's because Kansas City can't be any higher than the four. So it's they're kind of like, yeah, mail it in, which they might. I don't know. Um, even then, I, I don't, I'm not going to pick the Chargers. I don't like Easton Stick. I don't like anything about them. They couldn't beat Jarrett Stidham. So I think they have no shot at beating the Kansas City Chiefs, um, who has a better defense than Denver, has a better team than Denver, and they couldn't beat Jarrett Stidham. So who managed 16 points? Like, you know what I mean? It's like, I'm not picking them, guys. <laughs> Chargers, what a disappointing season. They might have had the worst season of all the teams. <coughs> oh, excuse me. That was awful. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Let me take a drink real fast. We're making good time. Pride game on the line. The Broncos take on the Raiders. Raiders two and a half point favorites with an over under 37 and a half. Yeah, I don't see Denver trying here. I think they're the kind of team that would lose for draft positioning. So, uh, you know, Sean Payton and them, they got to build. They got a whole new team to construct now that Russell's going to be gone. And, yeah, they're probably just going to lose. Um, and then with the Raiders, since they're eliminated, both teams are not in the playoffs anymore. Um, the Raiders beat the Colts or lost to the Colts 23-20, we discussed. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I like the Raiders. I don't know. I just think the chart or the Broncos gave up on the year and the Raiders are the type of team that will come out and try to win this game. Cause again, Antonio Pierce may be still trying to get a job. So, <laughs> um, you know, probably not a bad idea to try to win this one. I think Raiders might be playing better football right now, at least on defense. Uh, the Eagles take on the giants. Eagles are five and a half point. Again, I'm sorry. My explanations suck today, guys. I'm, I'm really fucking fighting this. This whole day has been an uphill battle for me. <laughs> um, 
I'm very just excited I was able to record this and get this out. I'm like, all right, cool. We got the Pix video done. Thank God. <laughs> uh, Eagles and Giants. Um, Eagles got upset 35-31, so they're going to be out for blood, looking to write their season, hoping to save their season and not lose the division in Week 18 uh, because Dallas won and they didn't. That would be quite comical. Uh, the Giants are... They lost 26-25 pretty heartbreaking game i don't know i like the eagles to win this again their offense is good their defense has been really bad but i don't even know if the giants have a good enough offense to kind of mess with the the eagles defense when it's been as bad as it has like they'll probably score and keep themselves in the game but i ultimately think the eagles will just kind of kind of persevere in this one sorry i'm <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> <coughs> almost died all right uh now we have the los angeles rams taking on the san francisco 49ers rams niners uh we know the rams are coming off the uh win versus the giants and the commander the 49ers beat the commanders 27 10 let me take a drink oh my god that was so needed all right holy shit that was gross i'm sorry about the last minute and a half it's all over now uh the rams are 49ers um there's this thing where uh, Kyle Shanahan just kind of owns McVay. It's like a long-standing thing where like he just kind of seems to have this wizardry over uh, um, McVay. The only time I think they like it's like five, maybe four wins for uh, Shan or McVay over Shanahan. So because of that, I'm going to be going with the 49ers. Um, I still think there's one seed business to wrap up in the AFC. In the NFC, so I think the 49ers have quite a bit to play for in this one. I could be wrong, but because I think if they lose and the Eagles win, I think they could still steal the one seed. No, no, they can't. Okay. Well, either way, I'm, I'm a little confused on that. I'm, I'm just going to move on. The Cowboys take on the Commanders. 31. Uh, the Cowboys won that game 2019 against Detroit, like we discussed earlier. Controversial game. And the Commanders lost 27-10, as we just talked about. Uh, Cowboys are 13.5 point favorites with an over-under of 44.5. And, and the only real question is, does the, do the Commanders cover that crazy-ass line? I think they do. I think they can hang in this game, especially at home. Dallas isn't the greatest on the road. Uh, a lot easier to play. Washington kind of plays good teams pretty close and gives them a scare. Um, but ultimately, I do think Washington's wanting to lose this game, hold the number two pick, or possibly fall to three if like weird strength of schedule stuff happens. But again... If you're Washington, you want Dallas to win this game. You want the Eagles to win because that will improve your strength of schedule. All those good, fun little things to help yourself out in the in the draft spot. So again, Commanders have nothing to play for unless they just really want to fuck the Cowboys season up and make them not win the division regardless. <laughs> I mean, like, but it's like, eh, maybe that's not really a strong enough reason to go from like two to seven in the draft. So give me the Cowboys over the Commanders. All right, last game. The Buffalo Bills on the Miami Dolphins. Bills are favored by three with an over-under of 49 and a half. I'm going to revisit this game um, on Monday or on fr uh, Friday because we'll know more about like the health of Tyreek Hill, Waddle. Uh, I know Chubb tore his ACL. We don't know what's going on with Mostert 100% yet. Like there's a lot of injuries. I think even Tua got hurt. I know they're probably all going to be good to go, but I kind of just don't know. And if like a few of those guys don't play, it's going to be really hard to pick the Dolphins over the Bills. Um because, again, Miami seems to be pretty dependent on all their pieces being there for their offense to function, right? Because it's a very ga gadgety, very gimmicky offense, very um, super like super well-crafted. But it's like if one of the pieces are missing, the craftiness starts to fall apart because it's super well-refined. So I could see like that being an issue in this game. But, again, um, also, like I think if Miami loses this game, they still make the playoffs, right? But like if the Bills lose this game, they go from the two-seed all the way down to missing the playoffs like the bills cannot lose this game whereas miami if they lose it's like uh we're still in the playoffs um i believe anyway but i know that the two seed or being out of the playoffs is on the line for the bills and probably the dolphins too i think um yeah it would they would be the two seed so two seed on the line who's gonna want it i think buffalo is gonna be able to take it due to being a slightly healthier team than the dolphins especially after they just lost bradley chubb i don't really know how they're gonna respond to a bills run game that's improving obviously josh allen but with james cook starting to run well too so i don't know i like the bills to steal the division from miami at the last second uh them injuries were brutal for the dolphins uh, last week right last week yeah yeah last week against the ravens 
Hopefully they're all back. Again, we'll we'll revisit this one on uh, Friday when we go over the week again, um, when we know more about like starters. But as of the way it sits, all right. Well, that pretty much wraps up this week. So that was another picks video. Good down the drain, down the tubes, in the dumps. We are officially finished with the regular season pickums for this year. We got a wild card, divisional round, and championship round, then Super Bowl due up next. So I can't believe we're already done. This has been a crazy year. Thank you guys so much for listening all the way through. Again, Happy New Year and everything like that. It's kind of cool that the first of the year is like the fat final picks video day. Um, I thought that was kind of like a weird poeticness. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, week 18. Can't believe we're already here. Sucks. Now we have to wait all basically all the way till August again until football starts getting going again to get, go, get through the Super Bowl and then nothing. Baseball, basketball if you like it. But the dark times are coming, my friends. We're gonna be longing for the uh, for the games like the Giants and the Bears again. Bears and Panthers. Oh. <laughs> Can't wait for March. And I'm like, you know, I'd even watch the that Bears Panthers replay. That sounds good. All right, though, everybody, thank you so much for listening. My voice is pretty much shot. Um, I hope you have a good rest of your day, night, morning, mid-afternoon, evening, nighttime, uh, that time between 7 and 10 when it's like kind of like evening. But I think there's an actual time for that. I'm not 100% sure. I don't know. All right, I'm sick. I'm delirious. I'm going to get the hell out of here. You guys have a good one. Go Lions. Go Tigers. And, of course, it's always go Patriots. And uh, thank you so much, everybody. You rule. Bye-bye.